In this video, I'll demonstrate how to install Web Connection for the first time using IIS Express. IIS Express is a small installable version of the full IIS web server that you can install without requiring administrative rights. You can also run it without requiring administrative rights and without any sort of configuration. You simply start it up from Explorer or the command line and you're off and running. Let's take a look and see what this looks like. The first thing we need to do is make sure that IIS Express is installed on your system. If you're using any version of Visual Studio, IIS Express is already installed for the appropriate version of your operating system. If you haven't, then you need to download a specific version. If you're running Windows 10, Windows 7, or Windows 8, uh, you need to download IIS Express 10. If you're running Windows Vista or Windows XP, use IIS Express 7.5. So you click on the download link after you found it in your favorite search engine, click the download button, find the appropriate download for your operating system, so in my case, 64-bit English, and click the next button to go through to the MSI installer. Now, I have it already installed, so I'm not going to take you through this, but the install is basically a one-click install, and once installed, IS Express is ready for you to work with. There's no additional configuration and nothing else that you need to do. So once you've installed IIS Express and you've also installed Web Connection by unpacking the self-extracting zip file into a folder, which in my case is the CWConnect folder. If you drill down into that install folder, you'll find a setup.exe file that you can run to configure Web Connection. This exe file basically configures Web Connection so that you can run the samples as well as installing certain components that Web Connection works with. So let's go ahead and run that and it will ask for admin rights. And uh, the first thing that you see in this configuration screen is basically a web server that you want to configure for. So in this case, we're using IS Express as the standalone server that we're going to configure for because we don't want to run a full version of IIS. So I click next. I'm just going to accept the default here, which tells me where the samples live and what virtual directory name to use for it. Um, and I'm going to go click Finish. Okay, and then I get an option to install the Ghost Script driver. If I have Ghost Script installed, it will automatically install a PostScript driver that matches that so that we can generate PDF documents. Then it goes ahead, installs the Visual Studio add-in. If Visual Studio is installed, sets permissions on folders. And then finally, you get a dialog that tells you what has happened, essentially. So one of the things in here is to notice here, it says do console with launch IS Express, the folder name and the uh, port. And that's the way that you can actually launch IIS Express. Now there's another easier way to do this, but this is kind of the idea that you have in order to be able to use IIS Express. And then finally, once all that is done, it'll also ask you to create a shortcut to your web connection application. And basically what this does is it creates a sh shortcut on the desktop that you can use to launch web connection out of the proper uh, folder so that the configuration is set up properly. And let's actually do that. Let's quit this started server here that just fired up. And in this case, especially we want to do this because we also want to launch IIS Express. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that the environment is set up properly. So I'm going to go to this web connection shortcut that was created. I'm going to double click on it. And then I can use the web connection menu that automatically starts, or I can start that menu explicitly if it's not there or was released for some reason by doing do WC start. WC start generates this menu or puts up this menu anyway. And one of the options on here is to start the IIS Express web server. So when you click on that, you can give um, this dialog a path to the web directory that you want IIS Express to run out of. So basically what this will do, this will start up a web server in that directory and make that directory behave as a website. So if I click on launch IIS Express, uh, you'll notice that a web page pops up here and Basically, what we're seeing is, is we're running a web server now at localhost port 8080, which maps this port over here that we specified at this folder. And there happens to be a default.htm page that actually is default.htm that has the web connection samples on it. So once the server is running, we can simply quit here and then start up the web connection demo server. To start up the demo server, we can do WC demo main, which is the name of the startup program that starts the web connection server. 
So the project name is WC Demo, which is the demo program, the project name. And then the main program inside of a project typically by default is named with a main extension like ta uh, tagged on top of it. So WC Demo is the name of the project and main is what we tag on. So WC Demo main.prg is the program that actually runs the application. So if we go modicom WC Demo main, you see there's a PRG file that has a small startup stub associated with it, and then a class that actually is responsible for the web connection demo server, okay? So the demo server is what actually launches our server application. So if I do WC demo main, there is my web connection server that is now running. Now I can rein this in here, and if we go over into this sample page that has been brought up here, we can now see that a request is rolling through every time we hit the sample page. So what's happening is, is that we are sending a request to the IRS Express web server, and the web server is passing that request on to our web connection page that is now responding to the request. Just to demonstrate that this is a real thing and that we can actually see this these requests happening inside of Web Connection, let's check out the page here real quick. So if we go into the WW Demo class, which is defined as a class, as a WW process class, and it contains a test process, test page method that is responsible for handling these requests. So what we can do in here is, is we can go and actually uh, change the name of this text here, and let's call this one first try. Okay, so we should see this value reflected as part of that request. So if we do this one more time, go back over here, we should now see this value change, and sure enough, there it is. So we've made a change to our Fox Pro code, and we've seen it reflected on the website. Likewise, if you want to step into this code, you can just set a breakpoint, so set step on and run this again. And if we refresh the page, we're now stopping here and we can now step through the code and examine variables just like we always would inside of our uh, Fox Pro based applications. So we can use the debugger just like we could before. So we can run and stop and reset the pointer and so forth and do exactly the same things that we can do in any standard web connection application. After you've played around with the samples a bit, the next thing you'll likely want to do is create a new project. To do this, go ahead and type in do console into the FoxPro command window. This brings up the Web Connection Management Console. Click on the Create New Project button and, oops, we got a problem here. We need to be running as an administrator because we actually need to create some folders and set permissions. We need to actually run this application as an administrator. So to do this, we can go back to the desktop and use our shortcut and then use the run as administrator to fire up FoxPro and web connection in administrator mode. So now we can run the console again and click the link and voila, we get our management console and our new project wizard. So now we're ready to create a new project. So I'm gonna be really creative here and call the new project test project. So the project in a web connection application is the top level object that controls the application. So this is the actual physical project and the exe file that gets generated. And it's also the web connection server instance that's responsible for handling requests and routing them. Inside of a project, you have at least one or you can have multiple process classes that re handle requests. Process classes in turn then have many methods that can respond to individual web requests. At the ultimate level, a method inside of a process class is what handles an actual web request. So let's create a process class called test process. Okay, so then we're also gonna use IS Express again, since that's what this uh, session is about, and we click next. We need to specify where the project is created, and by default it goes into this folder with the name of the project attached to it. You can choose any path you choose, but this is a good place to keep all your projects so they're all in one place. Next, we can specify a virtual directory, which for IIS Express is not really used. So we're gonna skip over this. Finally, the most important thing is the script map. We need to specify how requests are routed, and a script map is basically an extension on a URL. So that's a script name. So remember earlier we were looking at a URL in our feature demo here. So for example, the hello world example, if you look in the status bar, the request is called testpage.wwd. 
The .wwd is a script map extension that tells Web Connection to route to a specific process class, in this case, the www-demo class in the sample. And within that, then it looks for the test page method that is actually part of the script name. And that is what is actually firing that request. So the .wwd test page .wwd says, go to the www-demo class and fire the test page method. So we're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to create a new script map called TP1. So now that any request with a script name of .tp1 fires into the test process class. Okay, finally, we need to specify how we want our request to run. So this is going to be a standard process class, which is basically HTML based output. You can also optionally use a REST API, which is for creating JSON services that you can use for API backends or for AJAX applications that handle requests. So if we go ahead and let this create, we create a new project and up comes a page that actually runs this new application in the browser. So if I go now and launch this particular application, I can say do test project main. Remember the name of the project is test project. And then the main is attached for the main PRG file that gets run. So now I have our web connection server running here. And if we refresh this page, here's our test page. We click on this test link. Sure enough, there's our application running. So how did this work? Well, when we went into um, and ran this wizard, it automatically updated the uh, IIS mapping and launched a new instance of IIS Express that actually points at this new location. So when we reload this page, we see that it goes to this test page for this test project. So if we shut this IIS instance down and we want to launch it now on our own, Actually, let's start the project completely from uh, our shortcut that was created. So when the project created, it also created a shortcut on the desktop. So if you come in here now, you notice that you are in the web connection project, test project deploy folder. And if I want to bring up IS Express now, there's two ways I can do this. I can go back into my main web connection server and I can use here and go into start IS web server. That's one way. The other way is I can go into my application here. Um, so this is still in this folder, in this project folder, and I can say do console with launch IS Express. And when I do this, then it brings up my uh, IS, uh, launch IS Express uh, dialog here, and it automatically fills in the proper folder. Okay, so then we can run this, and now a folder is up and running. And we can go do project main, and here we go, our requests are working again. Okay, so IIS Express is a server that runs as a standalone application. When you shut that server down, the application no longer runs. So if I kill this, and we try to reload this page, you can see here nothing happens. We bet site can't be reached. So IIS Express is completely gone now. There's no web server running on the site again. And so the only way that I can get this back now is just to launch it again and then exit over here. And then if I reload this page now and we run it, there's my result. And you can see that the server is running now. If you want to play around with the server a bit and add a new method, remember what we were saying earlier, you can go into the test process class. And I can go in and make a change here, just like before. And I can say plus time. And if we run this again, um, we should see now that we have a test process with the time. If I want to add some new functionality by adding a new method here, I can simply go in, go to the end here, and create a new method. And I'm going to call it hello world. And we create that. And if I go in here, I can just say response.write hello world. And I'm going to put the time in there just for kicks. So we have that again. And if we save that and do nothing else, we can now go to the hello world.tp1 page. Oops. Why not? So what did I do? If we go back here, oh, yep, one too many else. So run it again. So there's the error page that comes up when I do something wrong. And if I don't do it wrong, then here we go with our particular request. 
So this is the lowest level way that you can get output into the web server. And um, if we wanna make this look a little bit nicer, we can go again, use standard page. So I can just go use standard page, put this hello world stuff up here, and then maybe say something like this, to run Foxbro code on the web. And there we go. So if we run this again now, we should end up with the same page now with a much nicerly formatted page. So there's obviously a whole lot more to what we can do here with Web Connection. And for that, there's other videos, but this gives us a base idea of what we can do with IIS Express in order to launch it, manage it, and run our application with IIS Express. Thanks for watching.